This lecture will be all about the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, this is a lesser known pathway of metabolism that's not talked about quite as much, but there's really just a few key concepts that you need to know about this one. So I'm just starting off the bat with the most basic concepts that you should know about the pentose phosphate pathway. The first is that it's used to make NADPH. The second is that it's used to make ribose sugars, which are a precursor for DNA. And for the third one, you've got ribose 5-phosphate. And I also put ribulose 5-phosphate on there because you may see both. And they're just two consecutive steps. So at a certain point, you get ribulose 5-phosphate, and then like the next step, you get ribose 5-phosphate. And... This is a precursor for nucleotide synthesis. This pathway occurs in the cytoplasm, and there's two main phases, the oxidative phase and the non-oxidative phase. And NADPH is made in the oxidative phase, and the five carbon sugars are made in the non-oxidative phase. So in the pentose phosphate pathway, you're starting off with glucose 6-phosphate. And in the oxidative phase, we're going to be making NADPH. And then in the non-oxidative phase, we're going to be making ribulose 5-phosphate and the 5 pentose sugars that we use for nucleotides and DNA. You should know some of the uses for NADPH. So remember, this was a big player in fatty acid synthesis. And I have a lecture on that, so make sure you check that out. And then also you use it for cholesterol synthesis, ribose deoxyribose interconversion. And then also one thing to consider is that, you know, we're, we're using NADPH to make things for synthesis, but we don't use it to create glucose. And so we're not going to see NADPH being used in gluconeogenesis. And so we'll see the pentose phosphate pathway occurring heavily in tissues that are making a lot of fatty acid and cholesterol. So we'll see PPP in mammary glands, adipose tissue, the liver, and the adrenal cortex. Now, this is going to be inhibition. I'm just going to start off by saying that this is a pretty low-yield concept. And I studied for this thing. I know that you guys feel like your heads are exploding with material. And for each one thing you cram in there, another thing leaves. But still, just to be complete, I'm going to talk about it. Just because inhibition and regulation is a topic that sometimes comes up. And so the regulated enzyme is going to be called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And you can remember this because G6P is the very first step of the pentose phosphate pathway. So at the very first step, we're going to inhibit it. And we're using NADPH to regulate the enzyme up or down. So as a summary, I didn't talk about this at the very beginning, but you should for sure know the other names of the pentose phosphate pathway. You may see it described as the pentose shunt, the hexose monophosphate shunt, or the phosphogluconate pathway. The major role is going to be synthesis of NADPH and pentose sugars, and it occurs in the cytoplasm. So that's it, short and sweet. You know, like I said, there's really just a couple things you got to know about this one.